Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Sean. This video, we're going to talk about force reps. You know, those, those reps where your bro or maybe that uh, inconvenient stranger is helping you with the bench press. Uh, is that actually helping you or is it not helping at all? Before we get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right, I'm joined by Faz Lifts, showing off that sexy sweatshirt. And uh, Faz, you can find Faz Lifts over on Instagram, YouTube, at Faz Lifts. Please follow him on YouTube. So, Faz, um, today, you know, this is a – we talked a little bit about this before hopping on the video. Um, when the average individual is at the gym and, you know, they get a spotter, usually it's a spotter they don't know. But even if it's a spotter they do know, it's kind of like a bro bonding thing where you're at that last rep. You're going to help each other. We're in, the, <laughs> we're in the trenches. We're going to war. We're going to help you with forced reps. And we're really going to get a lot, of, uh, a lot out of this. So um, I, I just want to toss it your way, uh, Faz, and say, uh, you know, what are your general thoughts? Is there value in this? So, yeah, I think, you know, you've got that, that, like Steve said, this sort of bonding moment. But there's also this golden unwritten rule that you're always going to tell the spotter. Uh, you're always going to tell the guy lifting that he did it all by himself. Right, it right. Was all him, even though you you know, because you were touching the bar. Oh, yeah. you, bro. And, <laughs> yeah, all you, bro. You know, because you were touching the bar. And he knows because he could see you touching the bar. But it's sort of that unwritten unspoken about rule that we both say it was all you and we acknowledge it was indeed all us uh, which is a lie <laughs> so my, my general thoughts are um just from that initial starting point we can see some holes in um in the technique yeah so um you know we talk about value and we we made a few points before we um before we hopped on the video you know, the, the biggest point is, you know, how do you know if you're progressing? How do you know, uh, you know, if if you're actually moving forward? Yeah. So just to throw some numbers at you guys, just so you can relate to this a little bit better. Let's say, and I'll talk in pounds. Let's say you're on the bench press, right? And you've been hitting roughly, I don't know, 200 pounds on the bench for your sets, you know, whatever you're doing. Now you are painstakingly close to getting that 220, that magic two plates per side, right? And so you decide rather than take the sensible route and progress through in five pound increments, you're just gonna go for it. And you'll say, hey, spotter, you come over here. You've pointed to the big guy, unsuspecting big guy in the gym, just in there trying to do his kills. Say, hey dude, bro, spot me for this. So he comes over, he um, gives you a spot. Now you manage to lift, you manage to get like say your, all your reps. My question is, how do we know how much that spotter actually helped? So you've gone from 200 the last week to now 220 on the bar. And on your workout log, you said you've lifted it, which is a massive increase. But the spotter was clearly touching the bar. How do we know how much pressure was being exerted from the spotter's hands onto your bar? So in essence, what we're asking ourselves is, how do we know what weight you actually lifted? And if we don't know, one, how can we log that in our training diary? And two, how do we know we've even progressed? Let's say your spotter took off 10 pounds. That's okay. Took off 15 pounds. That's okay. What if your spotter took off 25 pounds? And if you're sat there telling me, well, no, he'd never do that. Like I lifted a weight myself. Well, my question is quite simply, how do you know you don't? Right. I mean, when it comes to lifting, um, you know, all the WWE shenanigans aside that can you know, take place when two guys are, you know, training together in the gym. Um, the, the only thing that really matters and, 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 and I want, you know, I want to phrase this the right way because I'm not saying intensity techniques don't have value, but the only thing that really matters over the long term is, um, uh, you know, how many reps did you actually get by your, you know, yourself? Um, that's the measure of progression. And of course, somebody's going to drop a comment down below and say, yeah, but you know, those last one to two reps, uh, you know, are, are going to be the game changer. Um, and I'm not necessarily 
against that, but you know, they are not quality reps. They are not something you write in the logbook. They're just kind of like something you do in the middle of an intimate moment. You do something spontaneous and it seemed pretty cool, but really is there a lot of value in one or maybe two for usually it's one force. Right? Is there a lot of value in it? That's the question. Yeah, it is a value in it. And I guess from my perspective, how do we quantify it? That's that's really the important thing. You know, how do we actually quantify it? Is there value in it? How do we quantify it? And then based on those two points, I would say the negatives far outweigh those two potential benefits of getting a little bit extra, you know, of by the end of the workout. The negatives far outweigh that. And and we'll we've you know, we've been talking about the negatives so far. How do you quantify it? Um, how much is actually being lifted? And then I think there's some others as well in terms of perhaps safety of of the movement. Right. So what are your thoughts on safety? I mean, you know, look, let, there's a difference. Both of us have spent time in the powerlifting world, and there's a huge difference between, um, like, in the powerlifting world, the guys that are around you generally are, you know, like commandos. They're like special forces. They know form. They know spotting. And then you have the bro who might put one finger on one side or, you know, what, you know, what are the potential safety issues with somebody that really isn't, um, how would you say fully equipped to be doing what they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, um, the two angles that I want to approach this, but firstly, I would say there's the overconfidence, which matches into what you're saying. Um, Overconfidence without the precision of a powerlifter, of a, of a well-seasoned powerlifter. So let's say you, again, going back to my example, let's say you normally lift about 200 pounds. Let's say you were feeling really, really fruity that day and you decided to go with 220. That felt great. You went with 240. And it's not such a outlandish example. I literally saw somebody do this on my Instagram the other day. So you're lifting a weight, which is now we're looking at 40 pounds above your normal working sets, that is that much more stress on the tendons, on the joints, on the ligaments, everything. And you've got to ask yourself, well, why am I putting myself through this potent this stress, which isn't gradiated upwards as the weeks go along? It's just all in one. It's going from 200 to 240 to potentially more over the space of one session to the next. How much stress am I putting on my body? extra stress on my ligaments and, and tendons and my muscles, how how much of an increased risk of injury do I have? And also, am I really getting a great deal out of, you know, what am I getting out in exchange for that? Apart from the ego hit of saying, hey, I managed to handle 240 and putting that on my Instagram. I, I would argue that the stress on just the tendons and the ligaments probably isn't worth it. Well, I'm going to present an, an option uh, before we end, Faz, in, in just a moment, and we can discuss that as an option of force reps. But before I do, I, I want to touch, like, th there's a, a huge portion of people watching this right now who are going to say, come on, this really isn't that big of a deal, right? This isn't really that big of a deal. And I'm not going to blow it up into the biggest, uh, you know, concern in the gym. But I will say when I am lifting and – uh, when I even when I was on the platform or in the gym and I had to get a spotter, I would tell them, "Don't fucking touch the bar unless um, unless it's stapled to my chest and I'm dying. Don't touch it." And it's not just an ego thing, but you get the wrong. You've seen this in meets. You, you go to a powerlifting meet, yeah. you'll see this. You get a per like when you are at critical mass with a maximum amount of weight and someone touches the bar just a little bit in the wrong way, you're going to twist, you're going to turn, and that is going to dramatically increase the risk of injury. When I was at my first powerlifting meet, um, I was stuck about – I was coming up on a grinder on my third rep, and I knew I was going to get it. You know, you, you kind of know you're going to get it. It's just going to be a follow-through. And, mm. and uh, one of the spotters went and touched the bar, and it went like this. The bar went like this, and I ended up getting it. But that type of thing could cause a long-term injury. It's not something you play with, and it's something you need to take seriously. Um, and like I am, it's not just in the force reps, but like I'm so aware of unbalancing 
when it comes to training in general, like someone that's got inconsistent head patterns during RDLs or when they people that look to the side during a deadlift rep, I'm like, don't, don't do that. Don't do that because where the head goes, the body goes. So, um, you know, it for me, it's always been a big issue. Like do not touch the bar because the littlest thing can cause a greater force than we think. And Faz, we were talking about this before, like, uh, you know, what do they call the little spring things that me measure pressure, you know? Um, yeah, you uh, know those DIY tools that you use to measure your luggage before you go on holiday? Right, um, right. People, like, the li a little touch on the bar doesn't seem like it's a lot, but it's actually more than we think. And that can be unbalancing, and that can that can bite you in the ass quicker than you can, you can expect. Yeah. I mean, just to give you one more example of that from the powerlifting world, an old friend of mine who I started powerlifting with, he was doing a meet um, and he was doing the bench press. I think he had something like, it was an equipped bench meet and he had something like 500 pounds on the bar. So it was, it was serious weight. And he had a, he was um, about to fail the lift or at least what the spotters thought. Somebody came in and on one side, it came in too strongly. The bar wobbled because of the uh, weight of the bar and it landed on his teeth and right. he still... He's still got some pretty messed up teeth. So, I mean, obviously that's an extreme example, but what we're saying is a spotter introduces a fairly random element into what should be a stable act, which you've performed thousands of times at this point. A spotter is has not been there every single rep since you've started. You should have a grooved in lift. A spotter coming in is a random force, which could produce a very random result, which may result in injury. Yeah, and you know, in the, we're talking long run here. I mean, I've been training um, thirty five years, and I've only had one major injury, and that was doing a squat where the ground was uneven, and I twisted and tore a hamstring. Um, but you know, I play it safe. I, you know, one thing I I teach people is to practice safe sets. Um, you got you got to always play it safe to live to fight another day. That's a key to longevity in this in this mm. industry. And uh, you know, again, we're not trying to blow this way out of proportion, but you need to have an awareness of this because uh, I was thinking of the exact example you gave. If somebody just nudges the bar a little bit and it's over your neck or face, and you don't have uh, face savers or spotting arms, um, you know you're you're risking a lot. It's an unnecessary risk because that bar at any moment could come down on you, um, et cetera. I, I had one example fast from the first time I, I benched in a bench shirt. Uh, I was with a group of, you know, random gorillas, uh, you know, that wanted to introduce me to the great world of, of, uh, um, and, and they were trying to teach me to pull the weight down lower on my chest. And, you know, your arms can flip like that. And one of them bumped it a little bit. And I felt like my shoulder was going to rip out of its socket. Yeah. And you, you feel lucky after those occurrences that you didn't actually get injured. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Steve and I are have the last three examples have been quite extreme. But just to kind of bring it back to the the majority of viewers, all we're saying is we're not saying it's going to be a huge game changer. Like if someone touches the bar, that's it. You're going to break your teeth. <laughs> but it's more a case of you've got your training plan. We can use incremental load because the gym has got incremental plates, you know, two and a half pounds or whatever. Um, the risk reward just doesn't seem worth it for spotter four straps the majority of the time. Because one, you're not really going to be able to tell if you're progressing or not. Um, this sort of questionable value to the actual four straps. And two, there is a slightly increased risk in terms of um, injury potential from either a misgrooved lift or you are getting overconfident and handling more weight than you are actually capable of. So on balance, if you look at it from that perspective, it doesn't really seem worth it aside from just giving your ego, ego a bit of a tickle. Yeah, the real bottom line here is what we talk about uh, consistently, and that's have a plan, follow the plan. Um, you know, when you when people include the, the take home point, I guess here, Faz, would be when people include things that aren't in the plan that are kind of showy, or today I'm going to test my one rep max, or today I'm going to do four reps, or today I just decided I'm going to do 200 reps of hang cleans or whatever. 
when you include variables that are off the plants, they can sometimes be exhilarating, but they're not really going to increase uh, progress over the course of five, 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Faz, I, I want to, unless you have anything else, I, you know, one thing I want to present to folks as far as an alternative, if you want to do something uh, to your training that can add value, um, you know, you could, instead of doing a force, uh, you know, a force reps, do like a pause set where, uh, you know, you actually rack the weight, rest 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, and then do another quality rep or two. Uh, that doesn't really increase the risk of injury. Um, it allows you to get in an extra rep or two while you're fatigued, while the muscle fibers are kind of uh, being pushed to your limit. You don't need to do an excessive amount. But if that's what you really want to do at the gym, I would encourage you to do something like that. Any thoughts on that alternative, Faz? I think that's a good way of doing it. And Steve's got his bulldozer training, which is a great example of that. But yeah, it means that you're able to quantify the lift. You're able to actually write down what you've done and you know what you've lifted. And also it introduces that element of safety because you don't have to take those rest pause sets to failure. You can stop short of failure. You can rack it in a nice controlled way and then lift it again. Putting out a good effort, of course, but still, um, yeah, it, it makes a lot more sense if you really want to do something to exhaust the muscle, um, then that makes a lot more sense. All right, thanks, Faz. So if you guys have any questions or comments, drop them down below. And if there's any, uh, any topic ideas you'd like to see Faz and I discuss, please drop them down below as well. Please follow Faz on YouTube at Faz Lifts and head over to Instagram and follow him at Faz Lifts as well. Thanks, Faz, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care, folks.